Greetings, and today we have the release of a new expansion for Gwent the Witcher card game. Before I get started, if you guys, if this is your first time to the channel, I like to make Gwent content, so if that's your thing, please do leave a subscribe to the channel so you guys can check out some more great content. Um, so I wasn't expecting this. I woke up this morning and I went to work and I checked out uh, the Play Gwent set, uh, website and I noticed that a brand new expansion came out and like. There were no prior reveals to this except for that one uh, card um, from the uh, stream. And uh, I was actually pretty amazed by um, how low-key they kept this. Uh, I think some of you might have gotten some leaks. I doubt it, but I certainly didn't get anything. And I like to keep up to date with these kinds of things. So uh, I used up, I think I had 7,000 ore ready, and I just used it all up for all those kegs. And I barely got any legendaries out of it, but I got a crap ton of... I think I got every bronze in the collection. Um, that is collectible, of course, other than the tokens. And I think I had enough to like have like 5,000 extra scraps so I can still make gold cards from there. Um, so I'm just going to go through sort of the card reveals, the card list. I know they're already in the game themselves, but I thought I'd do it here just because I think it's a bit easier. This is going to be a two-part video because there's just a lot of cards for me to go through. And some of it might require quite a bit of explanation. Others might not simply because of how well it fits into the current meta. Uh, and I also want to go through like the gameplay changes as well. So like they did do a nerf uh, They did do some balance changes on certain cards and some of it does affect sort of the current meta very heavily so I'm actually pretty excited to see where the um, uh, Where the meta goes in the upcoming month or upcoming year, I suppose um, So before I get started they I was aware well not uh, not was aware But I am aware of their introduction of stratagems when I looked into the card list so sort of giving you that variety of sort of first turn advantages. So whenever you get blue coin, you don't just get tactical advantage sort of as the uh, only card that can give you that advantage on the first turn, but they give you other stratagems as well. Um, I'll be also going through that here, probably in the part two, this one will probably just cover like the bronzes and some of the gold and stuff. Um, Cause I want to cover everything today and I want to do it in two parts. So both videos will be coming out today. Uh, so the first card we have on this list is a card called Boiling Oil. Um, this is pretty much AT, uh, but it allows you to purify adjacent units. So this one's pretty interesting because you cannot use this card to purify a defender because you can't damage anything beside a defender because defender, that's the whole purpose of a defender. So I'm not quite sure what this is meant to do. Um, it could be used to, def uh, to probably, like, you could stop resilience, you could stop shield, um, you could stop lock, but I don't know why you'd want to stop lock if you want to lock him in the first place. Yeah, so that's usually what it'd be for. I don't think this will be used to sort of, you know, like I said, purify defenders because you need to hit defenders with boiling oil for this to work out, but it is an Alzer Thunder. It is sort of a stronger version of Alzer Thunder, so if you run any Northern Realms decks and you want to use some sort of removal, Boiling Oil would probably be the go-to card instead of AT. I like how they're making sort of faction-specific damaging cards um, so you, not everyone just uses AT anymore because AT is such an iconic card uh, for Gwent. So uh, yeah, this is cool. Um, it is a Warfare card, so cards with resupply will get sort of support with this card. So there is another thing to that. Um, I like I like to see a bit more of Warfare support for Northern Realms because I feel like they didn't get that much love in the past few months. Uh, so hopefully they get some more love. Uh, next we have an, our first Skellige card, the Crow Eye, Crow's Eye Rizomi. Rizom, I don't know how to pronounce. So you spawn a two crows in an allied row. If you control a druid, spawn three crows instead. So this is similar to like Zoltan's company, only it's sort of conditional. Zoltan's company just straight up three rowdy dwarves. This one is three crows if you control a druid. So these are the crows, two power, similar to the rowdy dwarves. So it looks like it looks like Skellige is getting some sort of control support um, with the abundance of summoning of crows. So if you want to run a control Skellige deck, then that's sort of your key right there. Um, for 5 cost, it is pretty decent, and it is an alchemy, so cards like Grimace will get sort of that extra uh, extra purify from it. So it's I like how they're finally adding some of like faction-specific key, uh, not keywords, uh, card types to sort of help with the support. So I'm liking that they're seeing more of this. So we could probably see Control Skellige down the road. Um, it's hard to see how I could implement that, just because Skellige's not really known for that too much. They're mostly known for their self-damages, they're known for, um, they actually gain more benefits when you damage other units. Control sort of tries to focus on your own setup on the field, that's kind of where Control, 
well, not control, sorry, swarm, I should say. Swarm, not control. Uh, swarm is where you really focus on your side of the field. Um, the only time Skellige really does that is with the Armored Jakar and the Spellblood Priest. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm interested to see how Swarm Skellige will work if they've been going with that. Next is Nature's Rebuke. This is the nature for Skell Square Tell. Um, damage an enemy unit by 5. Again, another AT sort of replacement, but with a condition. Uh, for a death blow, boost a random allied tree by 2. Uh, so obviously, Nature's Rebuke is probably going to be used on a uh mystic echo harmony type of deck because the main treons you'll really see are the weeping willow um and the great oak those are really the two big treon cards um that this card will probably benefit but it is again a sort of at kind of card so it's essentially a seven for five if you manage to use its ability pro uh, to its max potential but again at um what do you call it replacement for nature uh for square tell uh so yeah there is that Next, we got the rat. This is the token for the monsters unit. We'll get more into this when we start revealing monsters cards. But this is essentially uh, the sort of the replacement swarm archetype for monsters. So it's not just so much, you're not just relying on the insectoids anymore. I believe if this is correct, and I hope it does, uh, that uh, monsters is probably getting a beast kind of support deck, but that's kind of unfortunate because Skellige used to have the sort of main beast uh, meta, but I think beast is sort of just going around the factions, like uh, Skellige has beasts, Squirtel has beasts, monsters have beasts now, so this will be interesting, but we'll keep going down the list and see what we got. But this is a this is a faction that is meant for swarm, is monsters, They're, they have good swarm cards. Uh, so we'll see what kind of supports the rats get for the monsters faction. Uh, next, we got the Street Urchins from the Syndicate Faction. Profit 3 and fee 1, lose self by 1. This is a decent moneymaker. This is essentially a 5 for 4. Uh, whether you use the extra 3 as coins for other cards or you use 1 to boost self by 1. Either way, you're guaranteed 2 coins to use on whatever you want. So if you want those 2 extra coins, let's say if you're 2 down from, let's say, using a Savola, 2 extra coins for maybe your wall dealing 2 damage. Um, so this is a decent way to make some money without, you know, having to keep a tax collector for like two turns, you know, like two street urchins equals four turns of coin making, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, you could choose to boost it by one. It will give you that sort of slight boost, but I would probably use it just to save because I think a profit three is actually pretty good for a, um, unit. So next we got the crow again this is skellige's version of the swarm so we'll see what kind of support it gets down the road next we got the immortal cavalry from the northern realms faction it has a shield and on deploy you spawn a base copy of this unit in this row so it looks like shield is getting some support this isn't the only card with shield or some sort of shield support down the line spoiler alert um and that's mostly because i've opened 71 kegs and i've read all the abilities like during my lunch break at work so i'm sort of aware of what they do and what kind of love we're going to see uh, so shield is finally seeing some support which is actually pretty cool um, because this is a good counter to sort of cards that rely on damage output so denying that one damage is still pretty good not to mention this is sort of helping out with the with the control slash swarm for you know northern realms spawning another base copy but i think you'd want that base copy extra for that extra shield so if you want to combine it with a cur damn sorceress where you remove shields, Immortal Cavalry is a good card to use it on. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Next, we got the Crow Messenger. Um, so on deploy, you summon all copies of this unit from your graveyard to this row. And if you hold an alchemy card, you summon also summon all copies from your deck. I'm not 100% sure how this one works. Like for example, if... Um... The thing is, you can only have two copies of a unit, right? Whether a Crow Messenger is going to be on your graveyard and one is going to be at your hand, you could probably use this card as sort of a one-turn play. And then, um, if you hold an Alchemy card... So, essentially, what if I, the thing is, the wording on this is kind of confusing. It can do both summon from your deck and summon from the graveyard as well. So, I'm not sure what cards allow you to make extra copies. Like, if you combine it with, let's say, an Operator, you can maybe make a third copy of Crow Messenger, uh, but it would go to your hand, which is, which means you might want to mulligan one. Um, wait, does... Op I think, no, Operator, I think, just spawns it to the field. Never mind, I don't think that works like that. So, never mind, I take it back. So, I gotta take, sort of take a closer look. I'm just confusing by the wording, that's all. Um, 
But I think it is similar to like all the other cards that you summon multiple copies of it. I think it's just that this one can be done from the graveyard as well. So let's say if you played a Crow Messenger sort of on its own and it sort of like um, goes to the graveyard for let's say round three and you draw yet another Crow Messenger, I guess it prevents uh, having a dead Crow Messenger. Um, I just don't know if... Um, because it says also, right? So it's like if you play this first turn... And then you have an alchemy card and you don't have a Chrome Messenger in your graveyard. Will it still come out of the deck? So it would be like just sort of some... It's like having a deploy summon all copies of it from the deck if you have an alchemy card. Um, and is it also a good way to sort of play the res like Freya's Blessing to bring back a Chrome Messenger and on deploy, then you get to play the other Chrome Messenger and that, that's that's in your graveyard. That's probably what I'm thinking how this card works, but I'm not 100% sure. I have to see it in action. Next is the Knife... Night Wraith, so they're adding a Spectre um, faction. I saw a couple Spectre cards here in this, um, what do you call this, this expansion. So so this one is a support for the rats. So on Deploy, you spawn two rats, and on Death Wish, you spawn two rats again. Uh, this card is actually pretty good. It's essentially a 7 for 4 in a way um, because you have the 3 base. You have 5 for 4 actually to begin off with, and then if this card gets like killed, or you can consume it as well. It is consumed. And on Death Wish, you spawn two more rats. So that's sort of swarm rats kind of in a way. I'm not sure if monsters have any beast type of engines. I don't think they do. I think Skellige has that um, thing, but I'm not sure. We'll have to keep looking. I can't remember all the cards and their abilities, but I was aware of like sort of what's getting support and what's like not so much. But there is getting there is going to be a lot of rat swarm support for the monsters faction. So that should be interesting. Uh, next is Vernosiel's Commando. Um, at the end of your turn, boost self by one if you control only elf units. Ignore the condition if you control Vernosiel. Uh, so these are sort of the minions for Vernosiel. Not sure who Vernosiel is. I don't recognize that name from The Witcher 3. Um, if it is, then I'm going to freaking cry because I can't remember it and I've played The Witcher 3. Um, but it's good that Elf is finally getting some engine cards other than the Elven Swordmaster. Um, so, oh, and um, what's that card's name? Isengrim? So... It's good that you're getting sort of a bronze support, which is great. Um, as opposed to damaging, it's now boosting. Um, and if you have Vernosiel on the field, then it just boosts self by one at the end of every turn. So that could be pretty strong. If your defender can stay alive for that long, uh, Fidges Merluzo, I believe, then this should be pretty powerful. Um, it is five costs, so no portal control there, which, kind, which no portal ability there, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Next, another Skeletal card we have here, the Vryhead Saboteur. On deploy, you just bo boost an elf in your hand by two. So this is a stronger version of Dwarven Volunteers. No, is that what that card is called? Dwar sorry, Dwarven Agitator. This is a stronger version of Dwarven Agitator, just in terms of power, not so much the ability. Because um, Dwarven Agitator is boost a dwarf in your hand by two, which is usually used to support um, maybe one of your like, dwarf engines, like a dwarven berserker, or a um, or a Sheldon Skaggs if you're going with that last turn's um, power swing. Uh, Vrighthead Saboteur, I'm not sure what elf would need that kind of big power boost, perhaps a strong engine uh, would probably be the best case for that. But in terms of like slow play, you'll prefer the, I'll prefer the Vrighthead Saboteur because it just gives that extra power. Like playing a two, two power card like the Dwarven Argitator in one turn, especially if you have blue coin, it's not going to be good because you want to try and win on even. And it's actually getting pretty hard to win on even if you're playing such slow cards and your opponent just combos all over your face. They win on even and you're kind of screwed. So I want to avoid that at all costs. Next, we have the Trained Hawk. It is a Harmony card, and on Deploy, you damage an enemy unit by two, or if you deploy at the range row, then you move an enemy unit to their other row. So we're seeing some sort of row decision cards where their abilities differ based on what row you put them on. Um, move is actually pretty good for you to disrupt your opponent's row-locked cards, so good thing we're seeing more of that. Um, it's great because... It's not because of their sort of discouragement of using damage output cards, except obviously for those new expansions. I'm talking about like previous. Um, it was hard to get engines removed from the board. You sort of would have to, it's like you'd have to use pretty high damaging cards that you'd want to save for higher units on like let's say lower end engines. So it's a good thing that they're having more cards that let you move units to other rows to sort of disrupt their formation and sort of prevent their engine from working while still maintaining their power at the same time. Next, we got the Von Morlehem Hunter. Uh, so we got our first vampire card in the Nilfgaard faction, actually, which is pretty great. Um, you got on deploy. Again, it's one of those sort of decision-making cards. So it, you either give an enemy unit bleeding for two turns, or you can just lock a unit. 
Um, I would probably use this with the bleeding, although Nilfgaard doesn't really have bleed support. Um, lock support is great, actually, because you have cards that support lock. Like, you have... Uh, I forgot that guy's name. Uh, Vatra, or I don't know, it's not Vatra. Vatra's from Northern Realms. But you can seize lock units if you combo it with this card. Um, bleeding is okay too if you want to do residual damage, which is also cool. Or you can also prevent an engine from sort of making its ability work. Uh, so that's another option card, which is pretty great there. Next, we got a hunting pack, yet another Nilfgaard card. Um, on deploy, if an enemy unit has status, summon all copies of this unit from your deck to the row. Um, if we're talking status, I think we're talking about lock, shield, defender, bounty, poison. I think those are all status ailments. So if your opponent plays a defender, hunting pack comes out. I hope that's how it works. I hope it's not just bad statuses. Like, I hope it's not just debuffs. I hope it's all kinds of status. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty tough. But Nilfgaard is known for being able to lock anyway. So hunt I think Spy might count as a status as well because they have the eye sort of symbol. And I'm not sure if Resilience counts as a status. I'm not sure. I have to go look up what the definition of a status is first. But again, it's again one of those summoned all duplicates of it. Again, good for, good for that deck thin. So Skellige now has that. Um, what do you call it? Hunting pa uh, Nilfgaard has that with Hunting Pack. Syndicate has it with the Royal Casino Bouncers, I believe. Um, Monsters has it with Foglet. Um, Squirtel has it with the Mahakam Volunteers, and etc. Next, we got the Payroll Specialist. So it's an Intimidate card, so it will get support from Crime Cards, Profit 2, uh, and our Tribute 2, move a unit to the other row. So again, it's that disruption of sort of row-locked cards, which is pretty great. Not to mention, it is Intimidate, so you can keep it on the field, and every time you play a Crime Card, it does get benefit from it. Not to mention, get two coins, unless you want to use it for to move a unit, which is also not a bad idea as well. Um, because if you can prevent an engine from sort of doing its ability in the long run, it will benefit you by actually quite a bit. So, and not to mention this card gets more powerful the more crime cards you play. I feel like Intimidate is one of those like sort of underrated keywords. It's like it's not an ability that's used enough, but it makes sense. It's kind of similar to Thrive because it's it's a, it's pretty slow. It's just done under different conditions. That's all. So, might try to build an Intimidate style of deck pretty um, at some point. Next, we got the Caravan Vanguard. Um, so again, it's one of those row-dependent cards. So you, it either boosts itself by three on melee or on range, you can spawn a base copy of itself in this row. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of these like spawning, summoning self copies, uh, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, well, the Immortal Cavalry is kind of better because again, you can exploit that shield in ways. Um, this one, I'm not quite so sure how we would exploit it just yet. Um, we'll have to probably look further down the line for that to see if there's any sort of support for sort of duplicate cards. Uh, so yeah, could be, I don't know, Bream from uh, Nilfgaard, but it's not, I think it's only for soldiers, so it's probably not going to work that way. Next is a Caravan Guard. Oh, these are both neutral, by the way. <laughs> uh, so on deploy, you damage an enemy unit by one and increase the target by one for each three power the target has. So this card gains more value the stronger your opponent, your target is. So if you were targeting like an old spear tip, you deal the one initial, um, but for every three power it has, you deal another one. So with 12 power, 12 divided by three is four plus the one. So you'd be dealing five damage to an old spear tip. And this is actually, a, that's actually a pretty good card. Um, if you're targeting Eagern, if that has less than five armor, this thing's gonna kill it like instantly. And that is super powerful. So the taller the card, the more valuable Caravan Guard is. So I think you gotta be careful now how much points you kind of put into your units. So you don't wanna go greedy with just one card, right? Um, not that they do that already because of Igni, but, you know. Next is King Cobra. It's just a straight up poison, so it looks like we're getting more cards that can do poison. Um, I think before, the only two cards that could really do poison were Nilfgaard, Syndicate, Squirtel. King Cobra allows you to sort of be able to do it in almost any faction because it is neutral. You can use it anywhere. Uh, so we're hoping to see a bit more. It'd be cool to see more poison support, actually. It'd be pretty nice. Next is the Siege Ladder. Uh, we got move an allied unit to the other row. So again, we're seeing more of that uh, row lock disruption, which is pretty cool. And on, but the thing is, no, it's only on your allied unit. So if your Visigoda was moved to the melee row for whatever reason, Siege Ladder can move it right back down and let its ability keep going. And if it's surrounded by other soldiers, then you boost it by two. So it's a six for four, not to mention it can 
it can counter a, um, a move done by your opponent to force your cards to move. Or if you make a mistake and put it on the wrong row, Siege Ladder can sort of correct that for you. So, But I don't know if you can cure stupidity in that way, in this place, and I do a lot of those. So. I'll probably do the next row, and then I'll probably end it there and go straight to part two because there are still quite a bit of cards to go. So this might be a three-part video, if anything. Next is the Crow Clan Druid. On deploy, you boost adjacent beasts by two. So this is a good support for sort of the Crow because the Crow is a beast. Uh, so this would become an eight for five if you manage to keep two beasts around and put the Crow Clan Druid in between. That is a lot of power for a five provision card. So again... You can see a Swarm Crow deck with the Crow Clan Druid definitely making an appearance because that's a lot of power. You want to maintain that power. So this will be pretty cool, actually. I like to see this in action. Uh, next is the Crow Clan Preacher. Again, another Skellige card. Whenever you play an Alchemy card, boost self by one. Whenever you play a special card, boost self by one instead. So this is sort of the Skellige's version of the Slice of Ductresses. Um, in which that it does get boosted whenever a card is played, but it's not as strong because it has to be a special card. That's sort of its more powerful version. It's just only a special card. It's not any card where Slice Seductress is any card. Um, so this is still sort of weaker, but again, they're trying to support more of the alchemy um, cards in the Skellige faction, which is great. I like to see Skellige more, uh, more support because again, Skellige is my favorite pet faction. So this is a, there's a bit of bias in my opinion with this card. Um... Next, we got the Desert Banshee. This is sort of the Death Wish engine where every time you play a Death Wish uh, card, then this card gets boosted by one. And on order, you can consume allied units. So this is a pure support for um, mon Death Wish Monster because it gets more powerful. But the thing is, again, with the case we're making with the Caravan uh, Guard, you don't want to make a card too powerful. Otherwise, it's going to get hit hard with a Caravan Guard. So you want to be careful with this. Um... But still, being able to consume a unit, not to mention it gets additional power whenever you play a Death Wish card, is actually pretty good. So I do like this card. Again, not targetable by Portal, which kind of sucks. But, you know, it is pretty cool to see sort of a uh, boost engine for um, Death Wish. Next, we have the Van, Van Morlehem Servant. So on deploy, you give an allied unit vitality with duration equal to the number of enemy units with status. So again, we're going back to that sort of status reliant cards for Nilfgaard, which makes sense because they do a lot of locking. So it'll be pretty cool to sort of see this card. If, you, if your opponent has like six cards with status. Um, so again, it depends on how status works because if it doesn't, it doesn't. If it doesn't have to be negative statuses, if it could be positive statuses, then you can have a card with up to like maybe nine vitality or something. But you only have so many terms in a round, right? You don't want to, you know, you don't need to go overboard with you know dealing statuses. But I think statuses again, it's one of those like things that they just won't notice. Like if a card has doomed, spy, um, lock etc it's it's one of those like overlook statuses but they'll still count towards sort of the, this sort of ability where they're relying on statuses at least i hope that's the case so if they're trying to make you watch out for like you know what statuses you have in your cards as well this is a good way to do it next is the thirsty dame this is whenever an enemy unit receives a status boost self by one so we again another boost engine for status for Nilfgaard, but you got to keep giving those statuses so you probably might want to play this card whenever you want to like try to give a lock or a poison or a bounty or a bounty i guess not for Nilfgaard, um or a poison or like a spy actually i don't think a spy would work because it already has the status you're not actually it's not actually receiving it it's like you're giving it to them so i don't know if that's going to work like that with the thirsty name but if it does cool if it doesn't so be it but yeah it's pretty cool actually and the last card for part one we got the passiflora peaches um and on horde four at the end of your turn boost self by one so again another boost engine for syndicate whenever you every time you have four more coins in your hand and you don't use them then this card just keeps getting getting boosted by one at the end of each turn uh, so that's pretty much going to be all that I cover for part one. There are a lot more cards that I still have to go through and we haven't even hit the bronzes just yet. Um, so the second video would probably be much, much longer. Um, so like, if, like this video, if you guys enjoyed sort of the card reveal list, let me know what other changes you guys think should have been made or the, what you guys like that got changed. And again, subscribe for more Gwent videos. Other than that, this is Enzo signing out and I'll see you all in part two.